My name's Alan Blair. I'm the lecturer in charge for this course. In this first week, before we get into sort of the technical material, it is useful to look at the foundations of, uh, of AI. Now, one, one of the things about AI is that people come to it from many different disciplines and everyone kind of brings the preconceptions of their own discipline to the story. So the first people who had a look at AI were philosophers back in ancient Greece and they were interested in questions like what is the mind and maybe the mind is like a machine, uh, maybe it operates with thoughts that are encoded in some sort of internal language, you know, and how can we reason to choose the right actions and, and so on. This is what these philosophers have argued about and there's also the question of what is consciousness, which is still people are puzzled about today. Then there are mathematicians and physicists and they treat the mind, well, some people are interested in logic and different mathematical formalisms for manipulating logical symbols and others are interested in probability, how do you figure out the relationship between different variables or the likelihood of something happening, algorithms and analysis, how long is something going to take to run and then sort of statistical pattern recognition and uh, differential equations and so on. So many different areas of mathematics come into play in, in AI. And then there's the psychologists and cognitive scientists. They kind of look at experiments on humans and how can we figure out how the mind works by those uh, doing experiments on people or doing introspection. You know, can I think, but it's not easy to think about what you're thinking about, you know, or sometimes we get fooled if we sort of just think, sit in an armchair and think about how the mind probably works. Sometimes we get fooled and, and actually deceived into thinking it works in a different way to what it does. Uh, but there are a lot of experiments, whether you give someone a list, is anyone studying psychology here or have you taken a psychology course? A few people. So you do those experiments where you give someone a list and then they have to remember after 10 minutes which word it matches which other word and all that kind of thing. Linguistics is very central to AI. Uh, Noam Chomsky was a very important figure in linguistics. He developed this Chomsky hierarchy and there were these classical debates between Chomsky and Piaget. Chomsky said that uh, this is about innateness versus learning. So um, Chomsky said that a lot of language is actually innate and it's built into the brain genetically and then we just have to sort of do some tuning to whichever language you happen to be stuck with. Whereas uh, Skinner and behaviorism he argued that the brain was like an empty slate and everything was learned from experience. So these, these debates are kind of still going on. And of course, natural language processing is a big part of AI today as well. And then there's computer engineering. So building faster and more parallel computers makes computers at least seem more intelligent. The faster you can do something, the more intelligent you look, right? Um, even if you're doing the same thing as what people were doing 10 years earlier. And there's neurobiology and biocybernetics, um, psychiatry. So there's all these different areas. Uh, if you look on the online materials, there's links and things you can click on if you get interested and want to explore these things further. This, this Historical background is not examinable material, but I just want to convey to you the idea that, uh, that AI is a very interdisciplinary, a multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary uh, endeavor. And if we track this historically, I, as I said, the philosophy goes all the way back to the ancient Greeks, and there was this ongoing struggle between rationalism and empiricism. Now I'm not an expert in this kind of philosophy but 
this is kind of related to the, even the Chomsky Skinner debates. You know, rationalism says that a lot of the thinking is actually born into us genetically, and empiricism is no, we, we start out with nothing and then we learn from experience. Descartes studied the problem of mind body dualism. Is the mind something uh, separate from the brain, or is it just an epiphenomenon of the brain? Is it something uh, spiritual and you know, so on. People, are, you know, philosophers like David Chalmers are still studying that kind of thing. And this struggle between rationalism and empiricism uh, kind of got resolved in a way when Kant wrote his critique of pure reason. He tried to argue that a compromise between these two things could be, could be found. Sigmund Freud, in 1899, published his a famous book called The Interpretation of Dreams. Freud, his theories are probably not accepted today in all of their detail, but he made this important contribution that he emphasised the role of the subconscious mind, that there's a lot actually going on in our, in our minds that we're not consciously aware of. And this Skinner I mentioned already is a behaviourism. This rationalism, empiricism debate uh, yeah, someone uh, kind of tried to sum this up on a t-shirt a few years ago. Nietzsche is saying to be is to do is to be, Kant is saying to be is to do, and Frank Sinatra is saying do be, do be, do. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think it's also interesting to study AI and literature. Going all the way back to Greek mythology, there are these stories about trying to create artificial life, if you want, or create humans artificially. So we go back to Pygmalion and Talos, and then Gollum, and then Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. In the 19th century, we've got Carlo uh, Collodi wrote uh, Pinocchio, with, which was a puppet that was uh, brought to life. Rossum's Universal Robots, that's actually, I believe that's actually the first time the word robot was ever used, it was in this 1920 play by Carol Karpek, and then we got science fiction and Isaac Asimov, and finally um, Astro Boy or the Mighty Atom, and I've actually got my own um, <laughs> Astro Boy here. <laughs> now, the interesting, but what what can we take away from all this? Well, what's interesting is if you compare attitudes to artificial intelligence and robots for in different cultures. So people have done studies where they ask people what their general attitude is towards robots and then they, they ask them to name some robots. And it's very interesting that in... In Western culture, people tend to name, uh, you know, the Terminator or <laughs> this, this general attitude that robots are out to destroy us, robots are terrible, robots are horrible. Whereas in Japan and Korea, we get the opposite. You know, they, they, they name uh, Astro Boy and Go uh, Gundam and they have a, generally a positive attitude towards robots. Robots are nice and they're here to help us. And so there's this very interesting cultural divide. And you can really trace this right back through this history. The common theme is that if we're creating AI, we're creating life. And creating life is something that God is supposed to do. God or the gods are the only ones who are supposed to create life. So if we create it, we're it's hubris. We're trying to put ourselves in the place of God and something bad is going to happen as a result. So, um, Talos was a, created as a ser an artificial servant. Pygmalion was a statue that was brought to life, but then its creator wanted to spend all of his time with the statue and not interact with other people. <laughs> so, that actually, <laughs> that idea really has resonance um, today. Um, and, you know, Frankenstein, I think we all know what happened in the end to Frankenstein. 
uh, Pinocchio got into trouble uh, and turned into a donkey. Ro Rossum's robots took away all the jobs and destroyed society. Um, something bad happened with Isaac Asimov. So all this, you know, you, it's common sort of bad themes until you get to um, Astro Boy. And then, I don't want to discuss it here, but there's modern, obviously links to modern, there's modern movies just from the last couple of years that pick up on these themes that are also interesting. Now, th so that's the sort of literature. Now, if we trace the, his the technical history of AI, these are probably the main uh, events prior to the mid-20th century. So there were early mechanical adding machines and calculators. There was von Kempelen's mechanical turp that we'll talk about when we get to the games section. Um, Babbage and Lovelace tried to build a, a, a purely mechanical computer in the 19th century and th they did, didn't have enough money to do it. But it, if it's been proven recently that if they'd had enough money, they probably could have done it. Um, and then logic, so George Bull and Gottlob Frege developed uh, logic. And then we finally we get to the Dartmouth Conference in 1956, which was the first AI conference. And a lot of the people who were at that conference became kind of leading researchers in, in AI. And I think, I don't, I, the, I don't think there, I don't know if there are any of them left, but the Marvin Minsky died last year. He might have been one of the last, uh, last survivors. Okay, so I've done a lot of talking, but now I want to kind of open this up to you guys, and I want to pose uh, the question for you of uh, what is what is intelligence. Let me get a pen here. Okay, who, who has an opinion about this? What, what is intelligence? <laughs> yes. 